So as you get started on your CRM analytics journey, you're going to need some data. You're going to need to ingest information from Salesforce and from other data sources. So how does that work? Well, just quickly, as we look at this slide, we can see an overview of our CRMA assets. We begin with our various data sources on the left-hand side. Those are ingested through a data flow and data prep. We create our data sets, which are then used to feed lenses, dashboards, machine learning models, and all contained within the CRM analytics app. So how does that ingestion work? And how do we connect to data sources? Well, over here in Analytics Studio, you can see as we browse that we have uh, a number of data sets that are used for our insights and for machine learning models, etc. Those data sets were created within, um, generally speaking, a recipe like what you see here or, or data prep. We'll cover that in another video, of course, or they're uh, also uh, created using a data flow. But before any of that takes place, we have to be over here. We're in our data manager and we're looking at our connections. So we could be connected, as you see here, for example, to our local Salesforce environment. These are all the objects that we've connected to. We can sync those. Uh, we can go in here and we can schedule those to sync or we can run them all manually as we so choose. But if we step um, a little bit further back, where do we create those connections? Well, that's what you're seeing here in front of you. We have a number of out-of-the-box connectors available for CRM analytics. We can also use a integration platform or layer, such as a MuleSoft. There's a lot of different options around that. But for today, if we just look at our input connectors, you can see that we have uh, quite a few uh, different options around data sources that we can connect to. And if we don't have an out-of-the-box connector for the data that you're trying to connect to, there usually are other ways of getting this done. For example, we can build out an API connection, or we could use something like, a, let's say, uh, let's go in here and go S3. We could use something like an S3 bucket um, to be used as a staging area. And it's very simple to connect to your data, putting aside just connecting to your local Salesforce data for now. If we were to go in and uh, let's say we need to connect to a uh, Postgres, we would just click next. And then of course, as you can imagine, we would name that connection. So we could call that Postgres one, but then you would need your um, your credentials for that database. What would then happen is you would save and you would test that. It would create the connector and then your connector will show up here and you can configure the various tables and objects, etc., that you are um, connecting to. For example, let's look at the account object connected in our Salesforce, local Salesforce environment. We can search here by account. We can see there are 57 columns. A full sync was performed uh, not long ago. So let's go in and let's have a look at uh, a data preview. <coughs> and we can see uh, the uh, columns that we've brought in. We can have a look at the various uh, characteristics of those and as you're choosing what you want to bring in with the data sync, then <coughs> you can obviously edit that. We can see a preview of the data here. We can also filter our data. So we could choose data from a certain time period, etc. cetera. Uh, data syncing in itself is quite an interesting topic. There are a great uh, many uh, really good uh, support documents available online. If you just search for Salesforce CRM Analytics um, Data Sync, uh, you'll be able to uh, to get some information around how we how we schedule these syncs and uh, what's meant um, by a um, for example uh, a full sync 
or a partial sync, etc. But that's how you connect to your data. And once you do that, you'll be bringing in your data sources here. We'll combine them, we'll transform them, we'll run this um, data prep recipe that will create those data sets. And as I mentioned, you know, this is a good overview of how that process works. And uh, I trust that this was helpful. And next we'll be getting into data preparation. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.